mistakes made. Thank God for waking us up to a brand new day. I thank God for this Father's Day for making me uh, the father of wonderful children. And we just praise God. Thank you for our children. We were blessed that one of our children drove down from Pennsylvania to spend a couple of days with us for Father's Day. It was it was a surprise. They caught me off guard. I was not uh, expecting their visit and they planned that thing and Jackie worked that plan with them and uh, we just had a great time. But I just thank God for my children and I, I know you thank God for yours and uh, if your father's still living, honor your father. We just bless God. Praise God. Well, I hope you can hear me well. Uh, today, we're looking at the gift of faith, part two. The gift of faith, part two. We've been uh, studying on the Back to Basics online church, the gifts of the Holy Spirit in our overall theme for this year, why every believer ought to be baptized in the Holy Spirit or why every believer ought to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And for the last several weeks, for the last several weeks, we have been looking at, uh, we've been looking at the um, gifts of the Spirit. We started off with the gift of knowledge, and the Lord revealed to us through his word that if there's something you need to understand, you need to know what's going on, you don't know what's going on. As a believer, you can ask God, and the Holy Spirit will give you a gift of knowledge and reveal to you your situation. Uh, then we looked at the gift of wisdom, and once God reveals the situation to you, you may say, well, God, what shall I do? A lot of people mess up because they don't make the right choices. But when you ask God, the Holy Spirit, to guide you and direct you and help you with your choice, you will not go wrong. And so God has given gifts to the body of Christ. Every believer has gifts or every believer can receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And God does not want us wandering around in this wilderness called life without direction and without his help, without, without his anointing and presence. So we looked at the gift of knowledge. We looked at the gift of wisdom. I remember the time when I lost my car keys when I was jogging and I jogged about a mile and a half, got back to my sister's house where we were visiting and my keys were gone. I had no clue where my keys were. And so I prayed, ladies and gentlemen, and the Lord said, retrace your steps. So my family and my sister and brother-in-law and their children, we began retracing my steps uh, that I took in jogging. And at a certain place, here's where the word of wisdom <coughs> really kicked in. See, we prayed. And at a certain point, the Lord said, now stop. He said, this is where you took your handkerchief out of your pocket and you blew your nose. And he said, if you look down, you'll see your keys. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, my keys were right at my feet at the exact spot where I stopped and took my handkerchief out of my pocket and blew my nose. God is amazing. He is a miracle working God. He will answer your questions. He will reveal to you what to do. And so we're studying the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, then we went into uh, the gift of prophecy. All of these messages are on my YouTube channel. You can uh, click on YouTube and 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 my YouTube channel is Leroy Carter, and you can get these messages. They are anointed. They are blessing people all over the world as we teach on the gifts of the Spirit. And so last week, we started uh, the gift of faith, part one. Today, we're going to look at the gift of faith, part two. And next week, we're going to finish up a three-part series on the gift of faith. God wants you to know the gift of faith and know how he operates it in your life and these gifts are available to you as a believer now if you're listening in and you're not saved 
then this will not work for you. You must be born again. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you, if you're not born again, ask God today to save you. Ask God to uh, save your soul. Uh, tell Jesus that you thank him for dying on the cross. Tell him that you believe he died on the cross for your sins and ask him to forgive you and ask him to come into your life and live in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, the gift of salvation is free. God does not want anyone to perish and he wants to save every soul. I was so blessed uh, just uh, two days ago when one of my college classmates and, and, and we, we were freshmen together over 50 years ago. 50 years ago, we were freshmen together. Well, he called me and said another college classmate was going to be in Atlanta. And so we decided to hook up with him, uh, the two of us, to meet with the third person and have lunch. Ladies and gentlemen, um, the one, the fellow who was coming into Atlanta, he and I played, we, we played on the Howard University varsity basketball, baseball team, baseball team. He was the center fielder and I was the right fielder. And I saw him for the first time in 54 years. Praise God. Time has taken its toll on all of us. But the joy of the thing was that uh, he was not saved. And we were having lunch and I was just listening to him talk. And some of his language was not as uh, uh, I would choose it to be. But the Lord said to me, he needs salvation. And the Lord revealed to me that we're getting uh, uh, nearing the, the midnight hours of our lives. And God said, I want him to be saved. So lead him to the Lord. So uh, at a certain point, I began talking to him about his soul. And then uh, our other brother, uh, who is uh, our classmate also, who's, who's saved, he's a pastor here in Atlanta, he began talking. And then the, the brother visiting, he kind of blew it off, and he went, went off on a tangent. But before we left that table, we brought him back. The Holy Spirit brought his attention to the need for salvation, and, and God had me to explain what salvation was. And then uh, um, my other brother uh, asked him, uh, would you like to be saved? And and amazingly ladies and gentlemen here is a 76 year old man who said how do i get this how do i what should i do it was like classic it was like it was like john chapter 3 when nicodemus went to jesus he said what shall i do how do i get this and then uh, i asked my other brother to lead him to the lord to pray the sinner's prayer and our brother he received Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, and he was excited, and praise God. I mean, you, his eyes just got big, and you could just see an aura, uh, a new look in him. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it is not too late for anybody to get saved. It is never too late for anyone to get saved. And so, we want you to uh, make sure that you're saved, and then encourage others <coughs> To receive Jesus Christ as Lord. So once again, we welcome you to the Back to Basics Ministries online church where Jesus Christ is Lord. And in a moment, we're going to be ministering on the subject, the gift of faith, part two. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We honor you. You are so wonderful, Lord. There's none like you. We come boldly to the throne of grace. Father, forgive us of all of our sins. Cleanse us of all iniquity. And Lord, I pray that you'll bless our audience today. Bless those who are alive with us on this in this ministry. And bless those who will listen to the audio or watch the video. We praise you. We thank you that you raise up a worldwide ministry where the word of God can go forth. We thank you for those who are uh, uh, tuning in via phone or cell phone or computer. And we just bless you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord God, in Jesus' name, save today, heal today, help us to teach today, and help the people to receive. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn in your Bible, if you will, 
and we try to keep our services under 45 minutes. We try to keep our services short. Turn in your Bible, please, to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And we uh, want to minister from Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to talk, talk about the gift of faith. Praise God. The gift of faith. And as we've learned already from last week, everyone receives a measure of faith. God gives everybody a measure of faith. So nobody has any more faith than anyone else. And we're going to look in scriptures how God just used ordinary people like you and me. Yes, we're ordinary people. Praise God. Uh, and I'm so glad that we're ordinary people. And God loves us just as we are. And he uses ordinary people to bring about great blessings and changes in people's lives and in nations and on the world scene. Hebrews 11 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. We're Hebrews chapter 11 uh, verse 4, by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. In other words, Enoch did not die, ladies and gentlemen. The scripture says he just walked with God and he walked and he was not. He walked from life into eternal life. He never died. Enoch never died. He was one of two people in the scriptures who never died. Eli Elijah is the other one. He was carried up in a fiery chariot into heaven. So by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, ladies and gentlemen, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The scriptures let us know God will not bless anybody who does not believe that God is. The scripture says without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And then uh, the scripture goes on to talk about Noah and his faith and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Sarah. Look at, listen to this, listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Through faith, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead. Talking about Abraham, he was as good as dead, the Bible says. There sprang so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. Ladies and gentlemen, Sarah was 90 years old when she got pregnant. Abraham, ladies and gentlemen, was a hundred years old. You may say, well, in the Bible days, years uh, didn't matter. They were all young at heart and all that. No, no, uh, he was a hundred years old and he was dried up and she was 90 years old and she was dried up. But the scripture says by faith, she conceived by faith, Abraham and Sarah He's 100 years old, and she's 90 years old. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing is impossible with God. So we're looking at heroes of faith. Verse 13 of Hebrews 11, these all died in faith, meaning uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, and many others. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them 
and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Many of them did not receive the fullness of the promise. Uh, that fullness will be fulfilled later on when Jesus returns. But they embraced the promises of God. Abraham embraced the promises of God. God told a man whose body was dead, he had no seed in him. He was a hundred years old, and God spoke to him and said, you're going to father a child, and you're going to father so many children that uh, they will be more than the numbers of the sands of the sea or the stars of the sky. Now, God is speaking to a man who's a hundred years old, ladies and gentlemen. And most of us will say, oh, God, God, you're off the hook, God. But Abraham believed and Sarah believed. And because they believed, Sarah conceived and Abraham fathered the child at the age of 100. And Sarah gave birth at the age of 90. And because of that faith, the, the Jewish nation was propagated. And, and, and you can't count the number of children who have come out of Abraham's loins. And even as Christians, we are called by faith the children of Abraham. And you cannot count the, the offspring of Abraham, his, uh, his, his blood uh, kin or, or his, the kin that has been grafted in to his family through Jesus Christ, meaning Christians. And so we're going to talk a little bit about the gift of faith give you a little bit more this week and then we'll uh, finish it up next week because God wants us to walk in faith the scripture says in 1st Corinthians chapter 12 verses 4 and 9 and 10 there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit the Bible says there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit. So some receive the gift of knowledge, some receive the gift of wisdom, some receive the gift of prophecy, uh, to another the gift of faith. They, all the gifts are given by the Holy Spirit. And ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit gives gifts to every believer according to the Holy Spirit's will, his design, and what he wants us to have. So we're not to be jealous of another's gifts. Some people have the gift of healing. Others can work miracles. Others speak in tongues. Others interpret uh, tongues. Uh, some prophesy. But we're not to be jealous of another's gifts because God made us, uh, gave us a new birth and birthed us into the kingdom of God, into the church. We've been born again into the church so that the church, the members of the body of Christ, can love one another and complement one another and work together to the glory and honor of God. It's like this, ladies and gentlemen. Your body has a head, a neck, you've got shoulders, you've got a torso, you've got hips, you've got legs, you've got knees, you've got feet, uh, you've got ankles, and, and uh, uh, you've got a skeletal frame under beneath your body. And you've got the breath of life in you. You got the blood flow, the arteries, the capillaries, all this, the intricate design that God made for the human body. But the hand cannot say to the head, hey, I don't need you, head. Or the head cannot say to the foot, I don't need you. If you if your head says, says to your foot, I don't need you, you'll be tripping everywhere. You'll be falling all over the place. And so the eye cannot say to the hip, I don't need you, or the arm cannot say to the ear, I don't need you. Every part of our body has a function, ladies and gentlemen, and the body is designed to function together. Uh, if you're a walker, and I take a walk every morning except for Sunday, and I'm out there, and sometimes that right hip doesn't want to conform. It doesn't want to come along. I've got to speak to my right hip and say, hey, hey, I need you. The body needs you. You cannot rebel against the body. You're going to come along in the name of Jesus. You're healed. Now you get right in step and get in step with the left hip. And we're going to walk these three miles or these four miles. We're going to do this thing. And see, the body must work together. And when we get this in the church, 
whether it's the online church or the brick or mortar church, or when we get this in our marriage, whether it's husband or wife or children, when we get this as neighbors, that we all need one another, that that uh, we we cannot separate ourselves from one another, that we cannot put others down, that we cannot operate without others. Uh, the 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 preacher John Donne in the 1600s said, no man is an island entire of himself. We all need one another. God made us that we could work together and he gave us a new birth. And uh, according to Ephesians chapter 2, the body of Christ, we who are members of the body of Christ are fitly joined together. Just like the hand is joined to the arm and the arm to the elbow and the elbow uh, uh, to, to the upper arm, and uh, upper arm to the shoulders, and shoulders to the spine. We are fitly joined together, and we need one another. Ladies and gentlemen of the church, we need one another. No one is better than anyone else. No one is greater than anyone else. Uh, the Pentecostals don't have more than the Lutherans, and the, the Episcopalians don't have more than the Catholics. Uh, uh, we as believers, we need one another. And when we get this and humble ourselves and walk together in love, ladies and gentlemen, when we get this, uh, hey, uh, uh, Christy Carpenter, uh, when the people of Idaho get this and realize that everybody needs one another, when the people in Georgia get this, hey, Ryan, when all the people in Pennsylvania get this, and we, we know that, hey, we need one another, and we God made us to love one another, whether we're black, white, Hispanic, uh, Asian, whatever. When we get this and start operating in the design that God has given us and let the Holy Spirit live in us and guide us, Wow, what a powerful, powerful organ, or, organism the church will be. When Jesus said, on this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus prophesied about the power of the church. And so when we look, take a look today and what we see is a church uh, 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 just acting pitifully, uh, 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 not func dysfunctional and not doing what then the church is not lined up with the word of God when you see uh, 265 denominations in one nation alone the United States of America and when you look worldwide at the various denominations and the cults that spring off from them in this nation and other nations ladies and gentlemen Satan is out to destroy the church he's out to destroy the unity and the harmony of the church and we have to do all we can to humble ourselves before the Lord love one another hey you might not like the way that guy talks you not may not like the way she boasts about her her pies you may not like uh, 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 the, 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 the attitude of this preacher you may not like this person but we are under a mandate to love one another and to strengthen one another and to build one another up and we can do this, ladies and gentlemen. The scripture says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And the Holy Spirit has given gifts to every believer. My gifts should complement your gifts. And your gifts should complement some other's gifts. And together, we are working together as the body of Christ. Just as the toes connect to the foot and the foot connects to the heel, the heel to the ankle, the ankle to the leg, etc., etc. That is how the body of Christ is to function. And God has given us, he has equipped us with everything we need. He has equipped us, ladies and gentlemen, with enough faith, enough love, that there should be no hatred in this nation. Should definitely not be any hatred in the church no diversity, no, uh, uh, by diversity, I mean no divisions in the church, uh, no adversity. And anytime the adversary comes against us, we ought to have enough power in coming together, realizing who we are in Christ, that we can defeat the enemy every time by the authority he's given us. And so we're talking today about the gift of faith. We're looking at some 
characters in scripture, there are many, they operated in faith. They walked by faith. Faith meant they heard the word of God and they believed it. And some of the things God told them to do were impossible. But they walk by faith. And God honors faith. Ladies and gentlemen, God honors faith. When he told Abraham to take his son Isaac and to take him to the mountain and sacrifice him to the Lord, kill him and then burn his body to the Lord. And Isaac went with, along with his dad and Abraham prepared the altar, tied Isaac on the altar, and was about to stab him, the angel of the Lord said, Halt, no. God was testing Abraham's faith and obedience. Abraham was going to slay his son because he heard the word of God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, God's not going to tell you to kill your son, shoot your neighbor, uh, shoot up the, the rock rock uh, concert, or, 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 or run into a crowd of people in the mall. People, but Satan's telling people to do that. And, 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 and people saying, God said, no, God will never tell you to do anything like that. He tested Abraham and Abraham passed the test. And then God revealed to Abraham uh, that he had a ram in the bush. And Abraham took that ram, that goat, and sacrificed him to the Lord. And God was letting Abraham see that God was going to send one who would die and sacrifice his life for the whole world. And we're talking about Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, who gave himself because of Abraham's faith, ladies and gentlemen. And he trusted God. Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son. But God said to Abraham, no, I have a ram in the bush. Not only did he have, did he have a, a, a goat for Abraham to sacrifice to God, but God was saying also, I have a ram in the bush. I'm going to give my only begotten son. He's going to give his life for all mankind. He's going to die so that all can be saved. So ladies and gentlemen, there's no excuse for anyone not getting saved. Jesus has already paid for our sins. And there's no excuse once you get saved that you cannot get baptized with the Holy Ghost. Because the moment you receive Jesus Christ. Listen to this. The moment you receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, the Holy Spirit moves in. He comes in and abides in you. The scripture says he flows up like rivers of living water out of our bellies. And so there's enough power inside of you and me that we can operate in the gift that God has given us and when you operate in yours and I operate in mine and we work together to the glory and listen to the glory and honor of God when you do your part and I do my part I'm not jealous of your ministry you're not jealous of mine I'm not jealous of your anointing you're not jealous of mine but God has given each of us gifts according to his purpose for us and we're to operate and walk by faith in what he's given us and as we all obey God and walk by faith to the glory and honor and honor of God in love faith worketh by love ladies and gentlemen faith worketh by love we don't hate anybody there's no animosity there's no bitterness towards anybody we forgive those who have harmed us and offended us and if we offend others we repent we, and when we sin, we ask God to forgive us. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Christianity in a nutshell. To be born again and then to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to hear the voice of God, to know what God wants you to do and do it. Don't worry about what John Smith is doing. Don't worry about what Pastor so-and-so is doing. Pastor so-and-so is operating in what God gives him or her to do. You walk in what God gives you. Do it well to the praise and glory and honor of God. Please, God, realize and realize, ladies and gentlemen, this is what walking by faith is all about. Realizing that you cannot do anything of yourself. Jesus said, I can do nothing of myself. I do what I see my father do. That is why it is so important to be able to hear the voice of God. You may get a vision from God. You may see see a vision on the screen of your mind you may hear his voice he would tell you and then do what God tells you to do that's how Jesus operated when he saw his father heal 
uh, the blind, Jesus healed the blind. When he heard his father speak, Jesus spoke. And this is how we're to operate and, and operate in what God has given you to do. Don't try to take on somebody else's uh, uh, gift and ministry. Operate. If God has called you to make blankets and take the blankets to the homeless and, and ride the streets in the, in the evening and just give the, or in the daytime and give blankets to the homeless. That's your ministry. Do it well. Don't worry about those who are raising millions of dollars to uh, feed the hunger or to build churches or to build cathedrals. That's their calling. That's their gift. Operate in what God has given you. I believe this message today is really helping somebody. We've got a few more uh, uh, minutes left. The gift of faith is not normal faith. It's supernatural faith that God gives you. God gives you supernatural faith. God gives people supernatural faith to uh, like the time when he uh, had just a little woman pick up the back end of a car, ladies and gentlemen, the back end of a car so that uh, uh, some others could pull a person out from under a car. A little woman picked up the back end of the car with her two frail arms, but God gave her supernatural strength. Ladies and gentlemen, God uses ordinary people like you and like me to do uh, powerful things. Where Joel Osteen talks about his father in, uh, uh, he was in Bulgaria or one of the communist countries heading to his Czechoslovakia with another brother in a little Volkswagen Beetle and they ran out of gas. Uh, uh, John Osteen, uh, um, uh, Joel's father kicked the uh, switch on the floor to switch over to the reserve tank in that Volkswagen Beetle and there was no gas in the reserve tank and they ran out of gas in a communist country where it was forbidden to preach the gospel. They did not want to be arrested. They did not want to stay there. And so, ladies and gentlemen, Joel said his father and the other brother began to pray. Prayer changes things. Hey, Christy. Hey, Aaron. Prayer changes things. No matter what the situation, hey, Wes, no matter what the situation looks like, Ryan, no matter what the Chris, what the situation looks like. Hey, Christina, no matter what the situation situation looks like. Zisla, no matter what the situation looks like. When you pray, Linda Barrett, when you pray, God hears you. Why? Because you're His child. Your prayer is not going awry or off on a tangent. God hears. He hearkens to the cries of His people. Joel Osteen said his father John. And the other brother in the Volkswagen, uh, they prayed. All of a sudden, the back end of that Volkswagen lifted up, and the Volkswagen started moving fast and picking up speed and going forward. And John Osteen was not even steering the Volkswagen. It didn't have any gas, ladies and gentlemen. It didn't even have any gas. The Volkswagen was out of gas, but it was moving going up 60, 70 miles per hour. And uh, Joel said his father and the brother looked back and they looked over their shoulders in the, and behind the car were two big angels. They had picked up the back end of the Volkswagen and they were actually running. They were running, running with the Volkswagen, pushing it forward. And they were they were amazed. Two angels picked up that car and started running with it. And then they uh, ran that car up to the top of a hill and then drifted, let the car drift down the, uh, to the bottom of the mountain. And Joel said his father and the brother looked back and the angels had gone. The car is drifting on its own down the mountain. And uh, John is steering the, the vehicle. And then the car passed through the Czechoslovakian border where they were in safe territory. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about walking by faith, walking by faith. Ladies and gentlemen, God is saying to us, it does not matter what situation you encounter. A lot of you, a lot of us, we encounter situations and some of these situations look overwhelming look like we cannot make it that we will not survive but 
God did not save you to cave in. He's not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So I believe God is ministering to somebody today that whatever situation you're facing, whatever mountain you're facing, whatever giant you're facing, you be strong in the Lord and in the power of, of his might and ask God for the gift of faith and activate the faith in you. You uh, ask the Holy Spirit in you to rise up, bubble forth like rivers of living water, and you will get the victory. You will get the victory, just like John Osteen did, uh, to get into Czechoslovakia, just like that little woman picked up the end of the car all by herself so that someone could pull her loved one from under the car. Ladies and gentlemen, we have we can tell miracle story after miracle story after miracle story about how God used ordinary people. And the scripture gives us a whole roll call. The scripture gives us a roll call of people who has a gift of faith. And they were just ordinary people like you and me. The scripture says in Hebrews 11, by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, Bless both the sons of Joseph. Jacob took the time out and blessed the sons of Joseph and, and worship even while he was leaning upon the top of his staff. He had very little energy left, but he took time to pass the blessing to a new generation. And that's what a lot of us older Christians are doing. We're passing, come on somebody, we're passing the torch, the blessing to a younger generation. That's what we're doing in the Paul Begley School of Prophecy, the Back to Basics Ministry on this online church. We're passing the torch to a younger generation. You all pick it up, receive it, and then at a certain time in your life, you're gonna pass it on. Uh, we're making disciples of Jesus Christ out of people so they can pass the torch uh, and tell people about Jesus. I was so excited Friday that one of my classmates from I met him in freshman year of college, and I transferred to another school. So I had not seen him in 54 years. We had lunch together uh, the other day, and he was not saved. The Lord said he wanted this man to be saved. This man was fighting. He was cussing, and he was arguing, putting up the argument, talking about the church. But at one point, the Lord had us minister to him and tell him about the salvation through Jesus Christ. And this man, uh, when I asked him the question, where do you spend, intend to spend eternity? Do you want to spend eternity in a lake of fire burning forever and never being consumed? Or do you want to spend eternity with God in heaven? And he said, how do I get this? What shall I do? And ladies and gentlemen, we were blessed, my, my buddy and I, to lead him to the Lord, to minister to the uh, sinner's prayer, and to lead him to the Lord. Praise God. Now, this was an, an old man just like us. and uh, but, but now he can go back to his family, and he can talk to others, and, and, and he's in a position now to help get people saved before it's too late. So the body can't, we can't say, I don't want to minister to you because you, you use profanity. Or I don't want to minister to you to, because you're gay. I, wanna, I don't want to minister to you because you're a lesbian. I don't want to minister to you because you're black. I don't want to minister to you because you're white. No, we're born again by the Spirit of God. For by grace, we're saved through faith. It's not of ourselves. It's the gift of God. Faith is the gift of God. Faith got us saved. And so... God is no respecter of persons. He saved us from perishing forever in hell. And now he wants us to tell others about his goodness and his mercy, no matter who they are, what they're doing, or what they are, are, are into. God loves them. And, and, and you may be the only Jesus they may see in this life. So take every opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, no matter how how uh, 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 corrupt a person may appear, uh, how they may grieve you, what's going on. Uh, when you look at this nation, the politics and the, the, the ugly things going on in this nation, still, we as Christians need to pray for our leaders, pray for our president, uh, pray for our Congress, 
pray for our churches, pray for our pastors, pray for the people in prison, pray for people who are, are committing crime. We've got to pray for them and we've got to walk in love. Never, ever, ever think you're better than anybody else. For, for we were all sinners, but were saved by faith. We were all sinners. We were all heading to hell. Every one of us, no matter who we are, no matter what your color, no matter what you got, we were all sinners heading for hell. But God, hallelujah, but God in his mercy and his grace gave us, listen to this, ladies and gentlemen, he gave us the faith to trust Jesus and his death on the cross and his resurrection. God gave us the faith to trust that what Jesus did on the cross was sufficient to remove our sins and usher us into the kingdom of God. And so what God has done for us, he'll do for others. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. And when he do does for you, then you take the ball and run with it. And take. let's take this gospel to the nations. Let's take this gospel to the whole world. Let's make it plain. Let's not make it complicated. Uh, let's take this gospel to the whole world. I see my friend David Carter is on board. He's from Dubai. He's all the way in the nation of Dubai. And he's online, live with us right now. And he's taking the gospel to people in Dubai. Ladies and gentlemen, wherever God sends you, take your Bible, share the Bible, take the love of Christ, preach Christ Jesus, talk Christ Jesus, tell others about the love God has for them. Ladies and gentlemen, this gift of faith, we'll continue next week in part three of the gift of faith. And remember that it is the gift of God. God is no respecter of persons. And uh, God will give you the gift of faith. Can, the gift of faith can help you through troublous times. The gift, gift of faith can help you to move mountains when it looks like it's impossible. There is nothing impossible for God. The scripture says, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. You walk by faith. You've got faith on the inside. It's a powerful gift from the Holy Spirit. And God shows us in, this, in the scripture in Hebrews 11 and throughout the scriptures, how he used ordinary people. When they confronted great circumstances, he used ordinary people to win the victory. Remember Joshua? God said to Joshua, take the people around the city seven times. And on the seventh time, you will not have to draw a sword or fire a gun or a fire or a weapon or whatever but you're going to shout and blow the trumpets. That's the gift of faith, ladies and gentlemen. The gift of faith means when God speaks a word to you, you do it, no matter what everybody else thinks. You believe God and you leave the results to the Holy Ghost. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The songwriter said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Many of you have had experiences where you cried all night, but there was something about when the morning came. God's not going to leave you out there crying and grieving forever. God hears your cry. He hears your prayer, and he knows your every need. Ryan Trugler is on with us now. Ryan lost his job a couple weeks ago. And we began to pray. Ryan prayed for himself. And God has given Ryan a brand new job. Praise God. I'm looking again, looking in the chat window. I see my friend David Carter. David and his wife are from Texas. And God spoke to them and said, I want you to move to Dubai. I have a job for you in Dubai. And, and, and David and his wife and daughter, they move to Dubai. Ladies and gentlemen, they move by faith. It takes faith, like Abraham, to leave your country, to go to another country because God says so. And people may have said to David, oh, man, David, 
I know the, the Texans said, man, you be tripping. You be tripping, man. You done lost your mind. And But David stuck with what God said, and he and his wife are, 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 are in harmony on this. And wives and husbands, when you agree on what God says, nothing can separate you or separate you from the gifts and the blessings of the Lord. So praise God. We we just we just I thank God. I thank God for Aaron and Christy Carpenter up in Idaho. I thank God for uh, so many of you. Uh Christy, Christina, so many of you. Thank God for my son who's on and daughters and 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 our friends in in Africa, Bishop uh Elijah. Thank God that you're going into areas into tribes that have never heard the gospel and you're taking the gospel and 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 starting churches thank god that that we're 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 expanding the back to basics ministry in parts of uh, kenya and uganda and 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 tanzania and thank god for bishop davis in in jamaica uh who when people laughed at him when he developed and bought a tent years ago 30 some years ago a tent and started preaching i mean they laughed at him they teased him they ridiculed him and now he's the pastor of the largest church in the Caribbean. And we just bless God. And we thank God that we have a school there where we're helping them to train uh, the people. So ladies and gentlemen, trust the Lord. Trust God. Trust God. God continues to say to me, and he's probably saying to you, the best is yet to come. But ladies and gentlemen, the best is yet to come. You know, when a 76-year-old man hears something like this, the best is yet to come. Your latter years will be greater than your former. I get excited. I get excited. I get excited. I get excited. And I want to share the excitement with you because I want to tell you God's not through with you. God is not through with you. Satan might have beat you down. He might have won round one and round two, round three. He might he might be outscoring you on the on the scorecard. He might be whooping you six rounds to five. But the twelfth round has to come up. Hallelujah! The twelfth round, ladies and gentlemen, the twelfth round will come up. And ladies and gentlemen, you got that knockout punch. You got that Holy Ghost knockout punch. You got that Holy Ghost. Uh, Muhammad Ali said, float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. That's why they call me Muhammad Ali. Ladies and gentlemen, your footwork in the 12th round, you're, you're going to be doing that fancy footwork, the Joe Frazier okie doke, and then you're going to look for your opening, and it's going to be that whoo, that left hook. That left hook going to knock the devil out. Ladies and gentlemen, don't give up. Don't quit. The doctors may have said you're sick. You're sick unto death. You've got cancer. It's incurable. Don't give up. Ladies and gentlemen, that's only round 11. Round 12 is coming. It's a 12-round bout. Round 12 is coming. You just turn it over to the Lord. You just commit your life to the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. You commit your life to the Lord and walk by faith. Walk by faith. Read Hebrews chapter 11. All those people who walk by faith, some of them, they, they tied them up and threw them into the arena, let the lions eat them up. Uh, they took Isaiah, they stuffed him in a hollowed out tree and they sawed the tree in half with a saw. Ladies and gentlemen, some of them were burned at the stake. Some of them were burned alive. Some of them were made to drink poison. Some of them were eaten alive by lions, but they did not quit on God. They praised God and they refused to deny Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, and you can pass your test. The best is yet to come. We praise God. We rejoice in the God of our salvation. We give the God the praise. Once again, if you're listening today and you're not saved, meaning you've not received Jesus Christ as Lord, you can be saved today. You may say, well, Pastor Carter, I go to church. I attend church. I've been going to church for 40 years. No, going to church will not save you. You must be born again. And to be born again is a gift of God and it's free for everyone. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this ministry today. We thank you for who you are, for your presence. We give you the glory and honor and praise. Thank you, Lord, for all the people you brought on uh, into the church today. And we can fellowship together. Thank you for your anointed message. And, Lord, we just uh, lay hands right now on 
on the sick. I'm laying my hands on, on the chat window. And I'm laying my hands on the list of attendees I see are, are, who are alive with us right now. And I lay my other hands on those who are going to be listening to the tape. And I command that you be healed. We curse every sickness, every disease in the name of Jesus. We cast out every unclean spirit by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We command in the name of Jesus that whatever your situation is, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you take that by faith and say, I receive. I receive by faith. Just say that right now. I receive by faith in the name of Jesus. Then you watch and see. You watch and see what the Lord will do for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Um, those of you listening uh, and in, at the tape, and you want to get in touch with me, send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com. Uh, and if this message bless you, uh, let us know. If you have any questions, you can ask us questions or give us a call, 404-205-1101. You say, well, what about an offering, Pastor Carter? No, we don't take up an offering. Support one of your local churches or support uh, Feed the Poor, uh, Feed the Hungry, buy some blankets for the for for those who are out in the streets and uh let god use you just as jesus would do praise god 